If you're interested in making money in the stock market, one of the best ways to do that is to identify great businesses, the companies that grow earnings at above average rate and do it consistently over time, find those investments when they're at attractive valuations, and then hold them for the long run. Amerisource Bergen Corporation is a quintessential example of one such business. You can see that earnings have grown very consistently year after year at over 14% rate over the last two decades. The company started paying a dividend in 2002, and eventually the dividend began to grow, and it too grew consistently over time. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the fundamentals analyzer software tool, also known by many of you as Mr. Valuation. It's my pleasure to bring you to another one of my continuing series looking at fairly valued stocks in each and every sector. The healthcare sector is one that's really interesting. I've come up with a list of about 14 or 15 names in healthcare, and there are some attributes about the healthcare sector that I think are very interesting as I'll get into the video. For one thing, you find a lot of consistent growth. And as I talked about Amerisource Bergen, you know, you do want to invest in companies that have consistent long-term growth over time. The more consistent and the faster, the better. But, you know, you also got to be paying attention to valuation. So what I've been pointing out in all of these videos is the reality that the S&P 500 as a proxy for the market indicates that in general, stocks are very overvalued today. You can see this is the historical graph of fast graph of the S&P 500. The orange line is a P.E. ratio of 15, which is a long-term kind of normal range. The blue line is a normal P.E. of 18. So you can see that the stock price trades within that 15 to 18 range most of the time. Occasionally, it does get separated. It was overvalued coming into the recession of 2000, and it was also slightly overvalued in 2008, but also noticed that the earnings fell during the 2008 recession, and the stock price followed that. Then in more recent years, you know, since really about 2013 or 14, the market's been trading at very high valuations, and that was normal for several years until finally we it really separated and now we're into a point where the mar a lot of pundits and, and analysts and you know wise and prudent investors believe that the market is dramatically overvalued and looking for a fall a lot of people predicting that especially if the federal reserve raises interest rates this year however it's important to recognize that the healthcare sector is a sector where number one is you've got a lot of growth and number two you got a lot of consistent growth. And number three, you've also got a lot of attractive valuation. So valuation matters, and it matters a lot, as you've heard me say over and over. So I'm going to go through these healthcare stocks with you today and show you the valuations, the consistency, and how you can make money investing in the healthcare sector. This is a sector where I actually have either my own money or client money invested in many of these companies that, that I'm going to be showing you in this sector. And you can see why as I go through the companies. Now, remember, this is a high-level approach. I'm going to leave it up to you to do your own research on these companies, you know, to dig deeper into them. The idea here is to give you a perspective of what these companies look like, what their operating histories have been, how well they've performed for their shareholders, and how the stock market reacts to that performance by pricing the stock in accordance to the company's operating results. Earnings determine market price in the long run. However, emotions determine market price in the short run, and there are times when the market will irrationally price them. They'll either overvalue them or undervalue them. And the idea is to avoid buying them when the market's overvaluing them, any stocks in any sector. And then, of course, take advantage of other people's folly when the market's undervaluing them and buy them. And I think you've got a lot of choices in this sector. And, you know, my screen here was I look for investment grade companies, triple B or better. I looked for, you know, a reasonable amount of growth rate, reasonable consistency. I screened strictly in the healthcare sector, but I do want you to notice that even though this is one f sector, healthcare, there are several different subsectors here. You've got healthcare distributors, biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, healthcare services, managed care, and you know that's it, pharmaceuticals again. So you've got a, a really a diverse group. If you're looking at, you can actually hold two or three or four of these companies, even though they're in the same sector. They're actually in a lot of different subsectors. 
They're very, very high quality. You'll see a lot of companies are A-rated. Most of them are triple B plus or higher. There's a couple that are triple B minus. You know, you've got good solid investment grade. Most of these stocks also are dividend growth stocks. They pay dividends. Two of them don't pay a dividend. On the list, Holologic doesn't pay a dividend. Centene doesn't pay a dividend. And Cigna pays a modest dividend, but they just started paying a dividend. That's what I was starting to say. So let's go through these at a very high level. I'm just going to show you the companies historically. Remember, I'm leaving it up to you to do your own comprehensive research and due diligence. It's very, very important when you're investing in stocks to understand what the business does, how they make their money, what their profit margins look like, etc. That's something you would do with each of the individual companies. So if you find some here that you're attracted to, then you know you must conduct that research on your own. I'm just giving you a high-level look at each of these companies. So again, let's go back to Amerisource Burger and start with that. I showed you just the earnings growth and the dividend growth. Notice how the stock price has followed so closely to the earnings growth. Earnings determine market price. And therefore, looking at a 15 P.E. ratio becomes a very, very clear and good proxy. You know, always it was optimum to be buying the stock when it was trading at a P.E. ratio of 15 and preferably below. Below was really where you made your best investments. It was suboptimum when you saw the stock get overvalued. And there are clear pictures here of times when it got overvalued. And during those times, that usually would lead to periods where you might have two or three years of really bad performance, even though the business did well. You know, in the time I just showed you here, the business grew you know, 20%, 11%, and 16%, but yet shareholders lost money because they overpaid for the stock. But today, the stock is undervalued, as you can see. It's been undervalued for the last several years, and a lot of that has to do with the opioid epidemic and some of the politics that have been associated with healthcare. But one thing about healthcare, it's a great demographic play, and you can see when I take price off of the graph here, as I did when I in the beginning of this video, you can see that the company's performance has been very, very consistent and very, very strong. Earnings have grown at over 14% a year has a 1.39% current dividend yield, earnings yield of 7.32%. But I also want to show you something else. One of the keys about valuation is when you're trying to find a stock and invest in it when it's at an attractive value, the idea is, and, and I'm trying to buy the stock when the price is trading at or on that orange line or even below it. So here we got a period of time where the beginning P.E. ratio was below the orange line. The growth rate during this time frame is 14.2%. And if I look at historical performance over this time frame, I want you to notice because this started out undervalued, the company actually generated 15.79% annual growth. That's, you know, higher than the growth of the business. Plus it paid, you know, $7,399 a dividend. The dividend increased at a rate of over 20% a year. And you see the yield on cost, or the growth yield, as I like to call it, just kept increasing year after year after year. But if you bought it in September of 08 today, you, you would have started out with a dividend yield of less than 1%. Last year, your dividend would have been over 9%, and it's continuing to grow. But the key point is, by buying the stock at fair value, you've allowed yourself to participate in the growth of the business. So even though the stock is undervalued today at a PE of 13.66, it was undervalued when you bought it, and so therefore your price has followed the growth of the company, and you're fully participating in everything the business has offered you. And if you'd have overpaid for it, like, for example, during this period of time, the company still grew very nicely, as you can see here by following my mouse at the bottom. But as a shareholder, you ended up making a very weak rate of return of 3%, and that includes dividend income. So valuation matters, and it matters a lot. But the one reason that it does matter is it lets you participate fully in the business. I think Amerisource Bergen is still very attractively priced. It's been attractively priced. If you look at the normal PE, and if I shorten this time frame for the last seven or eight years, it's trading you know, about in line with a normal PE of around 13 times earnings. I believe the stock is worth 15 times earnings. I believe it's going to continue to grow going forward. Analysts believe it's going to continue to grow at about 10% a year. Long term, they expect it to grow about 11% a year. So this is still a good growth story. And if you know you look at the company with the analyst scorecard is almost perfect on this company. They've either beat or exceeded analyst estimates all the time. That's what I call consistency. And that's what you're looking for in an investment. So 
I spent a little time on Amerisource here. It's one that I really like. I, you know, it's it's a gro- dividend growth stock, but it's with the emphasis on growth. The yield is about 1.39%, but it has grown as I showed you. Earnings yield is over 7%. That makes it attractive. And future growth is expected to be double digit. So, you know, the company is triple B plus rated. So I think it's one that you might want to take a closer look at and, and conduct your own due diligence. Next in line is Amgen. Very similar story. You can see the effect of valuation. Amgen was a very popular biotech stock. Therefore, the market liked to pr- price it at very high valuations. It's doing that today with a lot of tech stocks, you know, names like Apple and Microsoft. And people keep saying, you know, that, you know, these are great companies that are doing terrific. Well, Amgen's the world's largest biotech company. It's a great company, too. It was a great company during this period of time here. You can see earnings growth was 12%, 18, 37, 27, 33, 17, 11, et cetera. And yet the stock was significantly overvalued. So if you'd have bought it in January of 2001, you could have held it all the way out to August of 2011. That's a full decade. This is what was referred to often as the lost decade. This was the cause of it. It wasn't because the businesses did poorly. It was because the stocks were so significantly overvalued. And Amgen was a classic example of that. However, look at it from buying it at when it was at a reasonable valuation. Um, Even though it's still undervalued today, your rate of return balloons to over 16% a year. Same company. It's a matter of buying it at a different valuation. Amgen started paying a dividend in 2011. You can see they've increased that dividend from $0.56 to $1.44, all the way up to expected to pay $7.62 in dividends this year. The yield is 3.35%. This is makes it a good income stock as well as a growth stock. Forecast earnings growth is expected to be you know, rather mute at about 45 or 5%, but because the stock is so undervalued, it still positions you to make double-digit rates of return. Long-term growth is a little better at 6%, but again, the stock, I believe, is undervalued. It's become a bigger company now. It's $131 billion. It's harder for it to grow but it is still growing, and you can see how it got very inexpensive just a few months ago and has been recovering back to its, you know, to its fair value level. So Amgen is one that I also like in this current market. Biogen is interesting to look at because this is one of the stocks that doesn't pay a dividend. It's been a pure growth stock, and you can see how the price reacted to that growth. But then, you know, growth has now stalled, and the company did, I think, spin off some companies in February of 2017, they had a spinoff. So you can see that, you know, earnings have faltered and the stock has done nothing for that period of time. It is trading at a very low valuation. That's the plus side, but it's actually expected to have negative growth or not very much growth. And I bring this up because I had this come up in the last video I did. You know, expect to have negative growth going forward. Just because the stock is undervalued, this stock trades at a PE of 12, has an earnings yield of 8%. Statistically, that looks good. But the problem is you've got to buy value and then mirror that value or relate that value to the future growth. And here you've got good value today, but you've got very poor growth going forward. That's what makes this not such a great investment, in my opinion, going forward. But it was a great story for quite a long time. And you can see how that worked out when it was a great story. Bristol Myers is, you know, like a lot of big pharma stocks, they kind of flatlined for a couple of decades. Earnings growth was actually very, very poor. And you can see that the stocks, you know, um, didn't do very much. Earnings growth was actually negative from 2001 through 2013 using the scroll bar here. It's the dynamic nature of fast graphs that I I really like, by the way, because you can review all these different time frames. Growth has begun growing again. It's been growing at 10% a year. I shortened that time frame a little more. It's been growing at 16% a year. The stock is is very, very undervalued. Offers a 3.34% dividend yield. Earnings yield of 11.63%. It's A-plus rated. You know, I believe this is a classic example of a stock that you can buy for both growth and or dividend income. Dividend yield, again, is 3.34%. It doesn't have a lot of forecast growth, 8% for the next couple of years, but because the stock is so inexpensive, there's an opportunity to make really great returns if the stock returns to the mean. And I think eventually they always do. So, you know, I like this stock very much, and I am long this stock as I have been the other two that I just showed you. 
but I like the stock for its low valuation, its high dividend yield, and it's got a very good dividend performance rate too. Dividends grown only been growing by you know three or four percent, but it's been very very consistent over time. And right now the yield is high, so if you're looking for a good income investment. Bristol Myers, I believe, fits that bill. Cardinal Health is another one that I did a video on years ago. The stock hasn't gone anywhere price wise. The business continues to perform well, offers almost a 4% yield, three and three quarters, blended P of nine and a half, earnings yield of 10.46. And again, the stock is very, very inexpensive. One thing I don't like about it, they've frozen their dividend here recently, that hopefully it's expected to start increasing the dividend again. I think if you're a long-term investor, this is a good time to be picking up Cardinal Health. But one thing it's attractive on is valuation. It's a good quality company and it's very inexpensive today. So Cardinal Health looks very good. Cigna is more of a growth stock in the healthcare sector, as I mentioned in the beginning. They just now started paying a dividend. You can get about a 1.68% yield. What that dividend record will look like five years from now, it's still a story to be told. But the stock is very inexpensive, trading at about 11.6 PE, earnings yield 8.59%. And it looks very, very attractive. And you can see how the stock price has tracked its earnings growth over time. The company is still expected to grow at double-digit rates for the next couple of years. And the long-term growth of Cigna is also expected to be double-digit growth. Checking the analyst scorecard, this is another one that other than for 2016, they had almost an impeccable record. It just gives you confidence that the analysts know how to evaluate this company and know how to forecast it. That's all that does. The next one would be Centene Corporation. No dividend, but you can see this is a growth story, over 20% growth. You can see that you know when there are periods of lower growth, the stock price follows that. When there are periods of higher growth, the stock price follows that. Again, like most of these healthcare stocks with the opioid and the politics that have been going on in healthcare, it's very, very inexpensive. It's a managed healthcare company. I like this stock very much as a growth story. You know, it has about an 8% forecast growth for the next couple of years. Long-term growth is about 10.5%, and you can buy it at a reasonably attractive valuation. But keep in mind, you're always buying the future, not the past. So even though you can learn a lot from the past, you know, the growth of 34% over this time frame here is not expected to exist going forward. So Centene is changing. You want to do your research on that to make sure that it still offers the growth potential because it doesn't pay a dividend. That's the point I'm trying to make. CVS, interesting, very interesting one. You can see the long-term relationship between earnings and the company's stock price. You can see periods of overvaluation and undervaluation constantly moving back to the orange line. You know, it got way overvalued up here in 2015, came back to the orange line, got really undervalued, even hit COVID, got undervalued again, but now the stock has been rapidly moving back into alignment. I think it's still inexpensive, offers a 2% dividend yield. Again, this is another case of, of one that has frozen the dividend, but it does have a good dividend record. We just had a slight interruption in growth, trading at 12.85 blended PE ratio, earnings yield seven and three quarters, 7.78 to be precise. 2.13% dividend yield, triple B rated. I like CVS a lot, but I've owned this stock now for a long time and I've been performing very well because the stock has gone from being undervalued and it's moving rapidly into fair value. So it's been a good one. Now, this is a German company, a little different ADR. There's some currency exchange going on here, but I, I did leave these. I was First, I was going to take these stocks out. This one, and I guess a partner company. I'm not really sure what these companies are. But they're both, you know, have the same name, so they must be related. But the reason I left them in there was because I wanted you to see that not all healthcare stocks look the same. These stocks obviously have a really different history type and different record than what we saw with some of the U.S. counterparts that I've been showing so far. But I thought it was interesting, earning dividend yield over 3% on the AG and company and the other counterpart here is uh, yielding about 3.3%. So they could be worth looking at. There are international stocks, so if you want to get some international exposure into your portfolios. The next is Hologic. Um, I have trouble with that in the pronunciation, as I have with other companies. I left this one in here because you can see that the price has really just been related to the earnings growth. You know, very consistently, you saw a period of overvaluation here. 
which was poor. We saw a surge in earnings. Now, part of that has to do, if you go click using Fast Graphs, you can go right into the website and you can see that they've been offering tests for the COVID, you know, the, the Omicron variant here, they're giving you a test. So they've got you know, a lot of testing and stuff that's basically been hot. So this little surge is kind of a COVID surge. And now the earnings are expected to go back into something more normal. And I do believe on that basis, the stock looks a little bit expensive, especially since earnings are not going. So again, just because the valuation is low with a 10 PE and almost a 10% earnings yield doesn't necessarily make a stock a good investment. You still always have to look to the future because you can only invest in the future. You can't invest in the past. So always keep that in mind. McKesson, healthcare distributor, very quality company. Opioid was a real big deal here. But you can see the price is moving back into alignment. The stock is still inexpensive at 11.58 blended PE. Dividend yield is less than 1%. Earnings yield 8.6%. This is really a growth story. And again, the key is that when you buy these stocks and you and you get valuation aligned with the company's earnings growth, let me scroll that out. So here we've got a period where the stock is trading just slightly below its you know 15 times earnings. The company grew at 12.57 percent, and it's a little bit undervalued now. And so you get a 12 percent growth and a decent dividend, even though the dividend is low. It's been growing every year. So, you know valuation matters and it matters a lot. When you buy these stocks at attractive value, what you're trying to accomplish is to get participate in the growth of the business. I cannot express that often enough. You know, the idea here is you can identify great businesses, but if you overpay for them like here, you don't get anything the business delivers for you. You've got to buy them at an attractive value to participate fully. And even when they're discounted in value now, you still end up making a good rate of return if you were smart enough and prudent enough and careful enough to buy them at a good you know, rate in, in the first place. Now, here's another pharmaceutical example, as I showed you with Bristol Myers earlier, where there wasn't a lot of growth in these stocks for a long time, but they started to grow again in recent terms. Long-term growth has been 4.5%. The seven-year growth is up over 10%. So keep that in mind. You know, if things change and you want to be able to analyze those changes and the differences, and that's something that FastGraph, because of its dynamic nature and allows you to focus on these different time frames, allows you to be able to do that. And you can see that Merck's stock price has tracked its earnings growth, you know, very consistently. A stock offers a 3.5% dividend yield, earnings yield of over 7%. Looking at it from a forecast that's expected to grow at over 25% this coming year, and then kind of flatline after that. The long-term growth is expected to be just about 13%. So these stocks now, it wasn't that, you know, here's a case where you can learn from the past and buy the future is a positive because in here the future looks brighter than the past. And, you know, of course, your job is to evaluate that and determine whether or not that's really true or not. Moving on, you know, we have the actress here. This was the old Mylan Labs, you know, kind of story. As an enigma, I really don't know what to say about this company. It got very, very inexpensive because of, of you know, lawsuits and things that are going on. The stock is now, you know, if you go into the corporate website for the company here, you know, they're moving again. They have, you know, good products and services that they're offering. And again, this is one that I think is just compelling as a speculation. That's the way I would look at it because the stock price has really overreacted to the dropping earnings. Earnings have been dropping rather dramatically. And when you shorten the time frame, it doesn't look as bad because it was overvalued. It's supposed to, it's going to start paying a dividend now. It offers a three and a quarter percent dividend yield. It's very, very inexpensive at, at only about four times earnings. Earnings yield over 25%. So this is a recovery speculation uh, investment because we're still looking at earnings growth that is not necessarily expected to be that stellar going forward. This would be really all about valuation and evaluation play. And it was also important to show this one because although there were a lot of really great companies in, in healthcare, and this was actually one too until you know the, everything hit the fan here starting in 2016, you want to look for those quintessential companies. And you've got plenty of examples here in the healthcare sector. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching. This is my continuing series where I'm going to cover Look for fairly valued stocks in every sector. But remember, fair value doesn't mean good investment. You've got to match 
earnings growth expectations with the current valuation to make it a good investment. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a like, you know, ring the bell to be uh, notified of future videos like this. Take a look at Fast Graphs if you haven't already. It's a powerful tool. Really allows you to really analyze the numbers, the history, and the future growth potential of a business, both. Plus, you can use it to access other research sites very quickly by going into external links I've showed you. Thanks for watching. I look forward to the next series.